we all fail at something. It's normal. Right? Failure is just one of those things that is a part of life. So if you're taking a class, you know, maybe you failed that class before, or maybe you're taking a test and you failed the test. How do you, how do you come back from that? The trick is to use those failures as a method of feedback, right? Try to figure out why you failed. Try to pinpoint what didn't you do that next time you can do that will improve the chances of your success. Not guarantee, right? It's, it's really hard. You know, it's hard to have any guarantees when it comes to stuff like this because everyone is different, everyone learns differently, but try to pinpoint, you know, what it was that you didn't do so that next time you're studying for that test, you can, you can change that. Uh, one, one common example that, that I always struggled with is I would take a class and most of the time I would not understand what the teacher was talking about. I, I would usually understand about 60%. And where I failed was by not recognizing that, by not trying to correct that. Instead, what I would do is I would just jump to the books and I would read the books and I would try to do more problems and learn from that. So I would try to self-teach that way. In hindsight, I probably would have benefited from watching more lectures online. That probably would have helped me a lot more because that was the hard part for me, right? It was the actual lecture. I had a hard time absorbing the math during the lecture. The books I was okay with, you know, books are books. Some are better than others, uh, but the lecture part, you can't really control that, but you actually can, right? Because there's YouTube, right? You can go on YouTube uh, or anywhere and, and find alternate lectures that you can use to teach yourself the subject. And I think that makes a big difference. So, you know, if you're struggling with math, just pinpoint what it is. Maybe it's the book, right? If, it, if, that, if it's the book, that's an easy solution, right? Find another book or get a couple books, you know, find alternate resources, try to Mix it up and try to learn from your failures. Good luck. Hi, everyone. In this problem, we're told that the hyperbolic cotangent of u is equal to 13 over 12. And we're being asked to find the other five uh, hyperbolic functions. So let's do this problem using like a minimal amount of information. So I'll assume that we know this identity here. So cosinus squared of u minus cinch squared of u is equal to one. Now there's other identities and there's another one we're going to use, but let's use this identity, which you might know already, uh, in order to come up with one that we can use to figure out this problem. So we're trying to get the hyperbolic cotangent of u. So hyperbolic cotangent is cosinch over cinch. So let's divide everything here by cinch squared of u, divide by cinch squared of u, and then divide here by cinch squared of u. So this piece here will be the hyperbolic cotangent squared of u. This is one. And one over cinch squared is the hyperbolic um, cosecant squared of u. Okay, now we're going to take the 13 over 12 and plug it into this new identity which we created. So this is 13 over 12, and this is squared. Minus 1 is equal to the hyperbolic cosecant squared of u. If you square 13, you get 169, and if you square 12, you get 144. So minus 1 is equal to the hyperbolic uh, cosecant squared of u. In order to perform the subtraction, you want to think of 1 as 144 over 144. So this is 144 over 144 equals hyperbolic cosecant squared of u. We can subtract these now because the denominators are the same. So 169 minus 144, that's going to give us 25. So I'm going to come over here and write it up here. So we have the hyperbolic cosecant squared of u is equal to uh, 25. That's a 4, by the way. It looks like a 9. 25 over 144. Taking the square root of both sides, we get hyperbolic cosecant of u equals plus or minus. So the square root of 25 is 5, and then the square root of 144 is 12. So now we really have to think. 
we have to decide whether or not we're going to leave this as a plus or minus, or do we have enough information in the problem to determine otherwise? Well, let's think about it. Hyperbolic cotangent of u is really cosinch of u over sinh of u. And we're told that it's equal to 13 over 12. So in particular, we're told that it is positive. The hyperbolic cosine of u is always positive because the hyperbolic cosine of u is the average of e to the u and e to the negative u. So you're basically adding two positive numbers and dividing by two, so it's positive. So in this fraction, the numerator is positive and the whole fraction is positive, therefore the denominator is also positive. So sinh is positive, but hyperbolic cosecant is one over sinh, so it must also be positive. So the hyperbolic cosecant of u is equal to positive five over 12. Okay, so what do we have so far? We have the hyperbolic cotangent, we have the hyperbolic cosecant. Well, we know that the hyperbolic sine is equal to one over the hyperbolic cosecant. It's the reciprocal of this one. So this is just 12 fifths, right? These are reciprocal functions. All right, what else do we need? Oh, we can find hyperbolic tangent. Let's do that. Hyperbolic tangent is the reciprocal of hyperbolic cotangent. So that'll just be 12 over 13, because you just flip it. And what's left? Looks like we're missing the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic cosecant. So I guess to, in order to find the hyperbolic cosine, um, we could use this. We could use this. Let's, let's do it. So hyperbolic tangent is equal to 12 over 13. And we know that um, hyperbolic tangent is sinh over cosinh, and that's equal to 12 over 13. We could have used uh, this one too. This might have been a little bit easier, but it's too late. <laughs> and then um, sinh is 12 over 5. So this is 12 over 5 over cosinh, and that's equal to 12 over 13. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by a hyperbolic cosine. So I'll put a cosinh here and a cosinh here. These cancel, so we get 12 over 15 equals 12 over 13, hyperbolic cosine of u. And then to finish, uh, we can multiply both sides by 13 over 12. So I'll put one here, and I don't know if I can squeeze it in here, 13 over 12, it's super tiny, boom, 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 boom. Hyperbolic cosine of u, or cosinh, is equal to 13 fifteenths. Beautiful stuff. And we're almost done, right? We just need the last one, which is the reciprocal of the hyperbolic cosine. It's the hyperbolic secant of u. And that would just be 15 over 13. That would be the very last one. So that would be the other five uh, hyperbolic trig functions. And I think the key point in this problem is Whenever you see something like this and you, know, you don't know the identity, start with one that you probably do know. And if you didn't know it, well, now you do. <laughs> so totally worth memorizing. If there's any identity you should know, uh, this, is, this is the one. Because you can manipulate this one to get the other ones. And then once you have some stuff, you can use what you have to figure out, to figure out the rest. I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there in the world. Good luck.